<laughs> All right. Hey, <laughs> this is Chicago Reacts. I'm Kira. This is Kit. We're hanging out. We're reacting to things because that's what we do. It's just what we do. We hang around and we react to things. Yep, and yep, and yep, yep, y'all yep. watch it and we thank you. And we hope that we maintain our energy, our entertainment value anyway. But uh, yeah, check out more of our videos, Kira and Kit. We react to all kinds of things, um, including some of these oversimplifieds, which is what we're about to watch. The American Revolution oversimplified part one. Uno. Very excited. I know that there's probably a lot to this story, which is why it's called oversimplified. And you can get those little slices of insight if you watch more of our videos. Stand against All monarchy. Right. Stand <laughs> against kings. <laughs> Let's watch this video. Holy smokes. Christopher Columbus, that is no way to address the king and queen of Spain. What is wrong with you? Okay, okay, so you know how we're looking for a new trade route to India, right? Right. And the earth is round, right? Right. So I'm thinking we can just sail the other way around the planet, right? Yeah. So I set sail, right? Mm -hmm. And I reach India, right? Right. Wrong. Wrong. I did not reach India. I did not. <laughs> all right, no, all right, get to the point. Did you know there's a whole nother freaking continent out there? Okay, and you think I should care about this? Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention there's gold everywhere? Gold? He <laughs> <laughs> in Central America in October 1492, and he had the time of his life. And by that I mean he went on a huge theft and murder spree. He stole gold, jewelry, uh, people, and a hammock. And then he returned okay. to show off all of his riches, it's including okay. a few previously undiscovered items, such as tobacco, the pineapple, turkeys, oh, it's and the pot. The now, pause button's not working. But oversimplified, Columbus didn't <laughs> discover America. The Vikings did. And you'd be partially right. In the 11th century, Leif Erikson was the first European to land in America. But hey, if you love Vikings so much, then why don't you check out today's sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> is a mobile game that was inspired by the famous strategy and RPG games of the 90s like Age of Empires and Civilization. Do you like building cities, collecting resources, training armies, joining a clan and going to war? Do you like it? Friend? Do you like playing games like this? Yes, I do. And I also want to point out too cuz you had the magic touch to pause the button. So there you go. Cuz I did awesome. it left-handed. There you go. Uh Christopher Columbus, don't worry folks, he died in poverty because he was a bum. That's who he was. Christopher Columbus was a bum. But anyways, continuing on. Uh, I do like games like this. I was going to say, yeah, uh, do, you, do you enjoy games like this? Yes, and especially the Total War series. Okay. So there we go. Cool. Vikings War of Clans is for you. And what makes its world so addictive is that more than 20 million online players are constantly changing the way the game evolves by never-ending fighting over resources, forging Ooh. new alliances, wow. and competing in live events. Support my channel by downloading Vikings for free. Only oh, for it just doesn't sound like that much fun to me. And get the special bonus I think I'm just not the audience for it. Dude, <laughs> Kira, you could be the next Viking warlord queen. It sounds a lot to me like a little like Risk. And I'm not a fan of the game Risk. But you could be a Viking warlord queen. Um, Why not? Um, do we get to dress up? Yeah, sure, if you want. Are other people dressing up? I think so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, why not? But you're, I mean, never mind. <laughs> Let's not get into the, right. what I was and about to inquire. We get paid under the table. <laughs> not by these yeah, sponsors. We're the no, not by them. No, no, not by them. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Columbus, time of his life, hammock. And suddenly the race was on to explore and conquer the new world. Ooh. After a couple centuries of warring with the natives and each other, the European powers had claimed quite a lot of land, including this area, which both the English and the French claimed as theirs. One day the French said, I'm going to build some forts along here. And the English were like, could you not? And the French said, sorry, but no, I could not not. And they went ahead and built their forts, which pissed off the English. So they sent an up and coming British lieutenant colonel by the name of George Washington with a combined force of Old GW. Americans. After a short battle, the French commander said, all right, all right, we surrender. Okay, boys, pack it up. They're surrender. Oh, sorry, was I not meant to split his head open with the tomahawk? Ah, don't worry. It's not like this will start a seven-year-long major global conflict. And what happened next was a seven-year-long major <laughs> global conflict, which Great Britain won. At the peace negotiations, Spain gave up Florida, while France gave up all of its territories in North America. But Britain's victory came at a cost, a 60 million pound cost. They were now Ooh. broke, in a lot of debt, and had to come up with some way to repay it. So they went to the colonies and said, okay, listen up. So a huge part of the war was spent protecting you from the French, and now we have no money because of it. So... 
I'm not sure what you're saying. <laughs> so we spent a lot of money protecting you from the pickle. Right, now we're broke. Yeah. Money so me. Is a pickle. Money yeah, me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spent all of our money protecting you, and now we need money. Money Can us. You please pay us back some money. No. Ah. Uh Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and tax you. In 1764, Britain introduced the Sugar Act, forcing the colonists to import sugar and molasses exclusively from the British and to pay duties on them. Then a year later, they introduced the extremely controversial Stamp Act, and it worked a little something like this. Hello, shopkeep. Hello, Mr. Bungleberry. Here's the deed for your new shack. Stamp. That'll be three pence, please. Wait, what was that? It's the new tax. I get a stamp on any paper or documentation I make, and you have to pay for it. Would you like to see this pamphlet that explains everything? Yes, please. Okay. Stamp. Stamp. Pens, please. This is awful. You know what? Just give me a deck of cards so I can go gamble my pain away. Okay. <gasps> no! Uh-oh. Don't you dare! Stay, 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 stay. The colonists were like, hey, my dudes, this new tax legislation right here, this is BS. Until now, they had enjoyed relative freedom to rule themselves, and now suddenly Britain was asserting its control. They were especially unhappy because they didn't have any representatives in the parliament that was levying taxes on them. So they protested. Orators gave fiery speeches. British goods were boycotted, and anyone loyal to the British found themselves increasingly harassed. The whole thing actually began to... By the way, anyone that was tarred and feathered, like, that was like a death sentence because the thing is, tar hardens and those feathers also are a problem too and tar rips off skin so anyone that was tarred and feathered died okay well i assume i had assumed that was there anybody that was doubting that no it's just i just i think a lot of people just you just wanted to make sure people knew yeah it's great <laughs> so if you oh wait, if you ever time travel <laughs> and you are seeing someone getting tarred and feathered uh, tell the people stop that Get help. Hey, stop that. Hey, stop that. Stop that tarring and feathering, you silly billies. Yes, exactly. And then, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> to take quite a toll on British business. And after just a couple years, the British were forced to repeal the Stamp Act. But we still desperately need money. What should we do? We could try taxing the colonies. Great idea. <laughs> yeah, didn't we really just try that and it failed miserably? Man. Look at me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Popular king that ever lived, and everybody likes you. And everybody you likes you. You did such a good job. Your oh, you're still here. Get the hell out. That's so awesome. 1966, the British made a declaration saying, we can do what we want because we're in charge and you can all go suck it. Then they levied a whole bunch of new taxes on the Americans via import duties. Glass? There's a tax for that. Lead? There's a tax for that. Paper? Tea? Oil? There's a tax for that. And once again, the Americans boycotted British goods, British business felt the pinch, and the British had to back down. All right, this is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Talking out of turn? That's a paddling. Speaking out of turn? That's a paddling. Making ruckus, that's a paddling. Look at my shoes, that's paddling. Using the school a canoe for paddling? Oh. What are you, you talking about? What are you talking about? That's that's that that sounds like how that's a taxing, like how everything was being taxed. It's a quote from The Simpsons where you know, oh. Chester was saying like <laughs> he he had a paddle and said he's gonna <laughs> paddle all the students using the school okay. using the school uh, using the school paddle for canoeing. <laughs> You better believe that's a paddling. All right. <laughs> They're my colonies, and I have to be able to assert my control. To repeal all the new taxes except for the one on T. Also send 1,000 troops to Boston to take control. Oh, and make the colonists pay for them. That's and a as bad British idea. troops arrived, the tension in Boston was palpable. You could cut it with a knife, and it was all about to cut a bull with, with a knife. Fifth, a band of local troops <laughs> began heckling a British guard at the customs house. More and more Americans joined in the heckling, while more British troops turned up in support of their comrade. Snowballs were thrown at the British. The snowballs turned to rocks. The rocks to oyster shells the soldiers outnumbered panicked one thing leads to another and you can see where this is going oh no five civilians were killed the patriot press throughout the colonies declared the boston massacre an unwarranted crime committed against the people of boston by the cruel british and the anger continued to grow a british revenue schooner that ran aground in rhode island was burned by the locals when it came to light that the governor of massachusetts supported the suppression of the colonists his house was burned by the locals. wow Next, the colonists would set their sights on the remaining tax on tea on December 16th, 1773, a band of patriots known as the Sons of Liberty disguised themselves as Native Americans, marched down to Boston Harbor, boarded a British merchant ship loaded with tea, and in front of thousands of spectators, threw nearly 10,000 pounds worth of tea overboard. The British were disgusted, and they punished Massachusetts. 
I would be like, hey guys, before you throw all the tea off, g- g- give me a g- give me a box of it. I I just want a box of it for myself. I won't sell it on the black market. Yeah, I don't like tea. G- 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 give me a box of it. You know? With a vengeance, oh, they dissolved it. its general assembly, it. revoked no, their I charter, wouldn't. and sent three thousand more troops to occupy the city. Meaning Boston and Massachusetts were now essentially under the direct rule of Great Britain. And oh boy, were the people pissed. The other colonies saw what was happening and worried they might be next. So we don't like that. To what to do. 56 delegates from 12 colonies gathered and met in Philadelphia at the First Continental Congress. The city of brotherly love. Philly. And the roll call read like a who's who of America's finest thinkers. I'm talking lawyers extraordinaire Johnny A and Johnny J, experienced military commander George Washington. OGW. Man, future alcoholic beverage Samuel Adams. Fiery orator Patty H. Guy who married a rich lady Big J Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> president at the first Congress, soon names like James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and much later Alexander Hamilton would all serve time in the Continental Congress. The question now, though, was what to do about the British. After much bitter debate and disagreement, they eventually agreed on an amazing solution. They would simply ask the British to stop. Can you stop? No, it didn't work. Okay, then tell the local militias to start arming and be ready at a minute's notice. And across the colonies, these Minutemen stood ready Minute for men. the beginning of the American Revolutionary War. Now, having your colonies in open rebellion is one thing. Once they start arming themselves, that's when it really hits the fan. So British General Thomas Gage ordered 700 troops from Boston out into the rebel-controlled Massachusetts countryside to destroy stores of arms and ammunition held by the rebels in Concord. The British set out in the middle of the night. Patriots, including Paul Revere, rode ahead to warn that the British were coming, giving the rebels time to prepare. The two sides met in Lexington as the sun began to rise. They faced off against each other, and in the confusion, somebody shot first. The shot heard around the world marked the beginning of the American War of Independence. The rebels were outnumbered and had to fall back to Concord as the British split up to search for rebel supplies. However, more and more Patriot rebels kept showing up, and this time it was the British who were outnumbered as more fighting kicked off in Concord. The most professional army in the world was forced to flee back to Boston at the hands of local, poorly trained militiamen. And all along the British were back to Boston, Patriot rebels continued to gather and open fire on the retreating British. When the British reached Boston, the rebel militias surrounded them. Boston and and the British were now under siege as small land and naval skirmishes continued around the city. And the British would suffer another embarrassing blow, this time in upstate New York. Colonel Benedict Arnold concocted a plan to take the British stronghold Fort Ticonderoga, which held a large amount of guns and ammunition. He set off towards the fort alone, hoping to recruit men along the way when he came across the Green Mountain Boys, led by Ethan Allen, who, as it turned out, had the exact same plan he did. So they decided to work together. (laughs) No, I'm in charge. 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 This went on for Sounds productive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna side with Ethan on this one, okay? He just has the face I can trust. <laughs> Some time, until the Green Mountain Boys threatened to go home and Arnold had to concede. The group raided the fort at night while the Redcoats were asleep and they caught them completely by surprise, taking the fort and all of its munitions with almost no resistance. Damn. Wow, great job, Ethan. Very impressive. By the way, what happened to that other guy we sent to take the fort? Who? Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Never heard of him. Ah! Ouch. Oh. Meanwhile what? in England. Duh. F- Nobody knew what was going on. The colonies were in open rebellion, and for now, they even seemed to be winning. So King George fired General Gage, replaced him with General William Howe, and ordered the rebellion to be put down immediately. Okay, the British are definitely going to retaliate for all of this, so we should probably put together a proper army. First, we need to pick a commander-in-chief, and I think we can all agree that that job should go to the man, the myth, the legend, George Washington. My friends, I am humbled and honored that you Old GW. such an important role. I did not expect for this. All break. right, you've been showing up in a military uniform every day for the last <laughs> two months. We all know you wanted this, so cut the crap, George. Dude. Uncool. It's or is that what I would say is, these are the only clothes I it, wear? This is all I own. This is all okay. I have? How dare you? Number one. <laughs> and number two, yeah, I wanted it, but I had a whole speech, and you had to be a jag off and interrupt me. I should go home, shouldn't I? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, George. George, George, George. I'm sorry. You're in charge. You're in charge. Maybe that's be right. president someday. Yep, that's right. Whatever that is. That's right. The president doesn't even that's say that. Yeah. So that's what he said. That's what he said. It's a story. We're, we're smart. We established Continental Army just as the British made their first major attempt to break the siege. They made plans to take the high ground on Bunker Hill, but spies warned the Continentals of the British plans, so they fortified Bunker Hill and set up defensive positions on nearby Breed's Hill. The day of the battle came, and as the British advanced, a barrage of Continental gunfire was opened up on them. Twice they tried to climb the hill, twice they were pushed back. The battle lasted three hours until the Continental 
Continentals finally ran out of ammunition and had to retreat, allowing the British to take the hill. While technically a British victory, they suffered nearly 1,000 casualties Damn. to the Continentals 400. The colonists showed the British that this wasn't just a rebellion, it was war, and they were ready for it. But one thing they weren't sure about was why they were fighting. While some radicals were starting to throw around the I-word, most hoped to eventually repair their relationship with Great Britain. So they sent a letter to King George saying, hey man, looks like things aren't going your way. Remove the taxes and let's be friends. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> Send that to the colonies. Your majesty, your handwriting is terrible. Are you sure? Just do it. I'm gonna kick what your did ass. it say? He's gonna lick my gross. Oh. So for the remainder of the year, small engagements. And that's what happened, folks. And, uh, yeah. Around the colonies. The British burned down the towns of Falmouth, Massachusetts, and Norfolk, Virginia, as revenge for earlier anti-British incidents. These actions played right into the hands of patriot propaganda. Overseas, the British were seen as brutes, and the French and Spanish would soon begin sending supplies to the rebel cause. During this time, there was also minor fighting going on between patriot and loyalist militias in the southern colonies. Benedict Arnold was still on a mission to win some personal glory for himself, so he headed up an attempt to invade Canada in a two-pronged attack. The Continentals managed to capture some British forts and the city of Montreal, but a harsh snowstorm with some smallpox on the side saw them defeated and pushed back at Quebec City, and they were forced to retreat all the way to Fort Ticonderoga. Speaking of which, remember all those guns and ammunition? Well, this guy's got a plan for what to do with them. He uses oxen to drag 120,000 pounds of artillery for two months through the harsh winter, 300 miles all the way to Washington and his Continental Army surrounding Boston. Boom. Washington's got himself some big guns, which is fortunate because up until now his army had been suffering through the cold winter, not knowing when the siege would end. Now, they could make a move. Washington wanted to launch a full assault on the city, but his junior officers felt the British were too fortified, and to his credit, Washington was great at hearing and taking on board the ideas of others. Instead, the Continentals worked through the night setting the guns up on Dorchester Heights overlooking the city, and when dawn broke and the British saw the guns, they knew they were toast. Uh -huh. Their positions were completely exposed. It was checkmate. They had no choice but to abandon the city. 120 ships carried 9,000 redcoats and 2,000 loyalists away to an unknown fate, and Washington had his first victory of the war. Washington wow. then moved his army to New York. When wow. they, returned, they would probably land there. In the meantime, a friendly looking old man by the name of Thomas Paine had written and published a pamphlet called Common Sense, in which he advocated for total independence. Don't by the way, common sense. No. By the way uh, we here at Chicago <laughs> Reacts support the idea. Do not eat yellow snow. It's just common sense. Now, if you see someone having lemonade and be like, hey, I'm going to make you a snow cone, and snow you, cones are okay. That's fine. And that might look yellow. But it's not like the yellow that you find in the snow. No, so don't generally you'll find yeah. a snow cone in a different place than exactly. you will yellow snow. And it's very important you share this information out because I know right now society's falling apart, things are sinking. Don't eat yellow snow, folks, okay? Common sense. Com common sense. As Thomas Paine said. Britain. Thank you, Thomas Paine. Colonies like wildfire, and to this day remains the best-selling title in America. It was read aloud in taverns and meeting halls, and brought the idea of independence into the mainstream. Congress began to seriously sorry for the consider moose, the idea. Thomas Jefferson was selected to write about like official yeah, declaration probably. of independence, and he went hard, writing that all men are created dead. equal, with certain inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of course, Jefferson had over a hundred slaves, but we don't have to talk. <laughs> <about this. laughs> oh, no. oh, Ironic. And John Adams declared that the second of July would go down as the most remembered day in American history. Then a Wrong. Days later, Wrong. The United Fourth Wrong. of July. Wrong. To quote, to quote someone, uh, to quote an episode from The Simpsons. It celebrate your country's independence by blowing half of it up. <laughs> States of America was born. There was no turning back now. The Americans tore down a statue of King George in New York and melted him down into 42,000 musket bowls. To the British, it was treason. That's awesome. the king had it's his treason, way, then. And all of Congress would be hung. Speaking of the British, guess who's back? The king sent an intimidating force of 130 warships and 25,000 men to New York. Washington knew that taking on the most powerful military in the world wouldn't be easy. The British set up camp on Staten Island as the Americans dug into defensive positions around Brooklyn Heights, waiting for an attack to come. But the British just waited, wearing down their opponent's nerve while building their own strength. At one point, they launched a big scary artillery barrage and then said, you know, if I was you right now, I'd probably sue for peace. But Washington told them to shove it. The Americans kept holding out for what was coming, and when they finally hit, they hit hard. 15,000 British troops approached the American position, and the two sides fired on each other in massive rows. But what the Americans didn't realize was they were only fighting a decoy. The main British force was going around to fight. Oh, no. oh. 
Marines. The Americans panicked and retreated back to Brooklyn Heights, where they then found themselves trapped between the British Army and the river. It looked as though the war was already lost, but luckily, instead of attacking, the British decided to dig in for a siege, and then a thick fog set in, allowing Washington's army to escape across the river unimpeded. The British continued to chase and engage the Americans off Manhattan, and the Americans suffered defeat after defeat after defeat. It was a disaster. Washington's leadership was called into question, as thousands of American POWs were left to rot as traitors. Washington's army fled through New Jersey all the way down to Pennsylvania. Rarely had an army been so badly beaten, yet survived to fight another day. It's not over yet. There's a part two, folks. It's not the all end for old right. GW and his fantastic friends. That's right. It ain't over. It ain't over until the, you know, fat lady sings. That's right. And she has yet to sing her final I guess. Tone. I don't know or, who that is. Nope. So whoever she is, hold it back because you know what? I think the rebels might have something up their sleeve. I think and, so too. And we'll take out the Death Star. I mean, the, the, the British Army. There you go. Yeah, they <laughs> almost almost got those two confused. They really want those colonies. Yeah, there we go. So all right. If you like, stay this, tuned. If you like this historical stuff, and you know any other cool historical docu series or things. You should check out that you want us to react to let us know yeah type in the comment section below and we'll get to it as fast as possible chicago style chicago style no ketchup bye bye all right bye bye